Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 524. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old, and it is Tuesday the 13th of August here in not quite so sunny Parramatta in the heart of the Sydney Basin in Australia. Okay, before we get started, you have an opportunity, actually a job. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to pay you for it, but you have a job to help promote Anglican Unscripted. You do that by sharing the program, by liking us on Facebook, liking us on YouTube. If you so desire, you can subscribe to us on YouTube so you get out of Bannock updates so you'll know when the ex- next episode is out. I'm talking to a gentleman who is experiencing winter right now. It's actually snowing, or it snowed recently down there. And I, I'm not doing this for the weather report, but that's the strange oddity about being in a different hemisphere, David. It, it is, it is. And actually, what's even stranger is I've just come back from uh, spending about four or five weeks up in, uh, in Europe, uh, in France, and in the, the low countries, and, and, and the UK. And they've been, they experienced a heat wave while I was there, up to 40 degrees uh, Celsius, and I came back, and here in New South Wales, uh, we've had uh, probably one of the bitterest winters in a long, long time. It even snowed uh, up in the mountains, and for here in Australia, so here in here in New South Wales, we had some places where it actually snowed and snowed heavily. Uh, on the news yesterday, they were showing uh, photographs of kangaroos bouncing along in the snow. You don't get that very often. No, you Mind don't. You, I don't think you guys get. I don't think you guys get kangaroos very often, anyway. But we have no. them with snow. Well, only when we watch Mad Max uh, episodes every once in a while for the old the movies. A um, lot of news coming from uh, the uh, down under Australia Sydney area. Why don't you uh, tell us what's going on in, in regards to kind of division within your, within the church? Sure. So uh, just a little bit further south of Sydney is the state of Victoria. Uh, And in Victoria, there are a number of dioceses who are pushing ahead with a more liberal uh, agenda. Uh, And prominently now we have uh, Bishop John Parks, who is the Bishop of the Diocese of Wangaratta. Uh, Parks has always been one of the guys who's been pushing this stuff uh, ahead. And he has uh, announced uh, in the last few months that he will, he himself will be putting forward a motion uh, to his credit, he's taken responsibility for himself, but he'll be putting forward a motion towards his synod, uh, which is coming up on the 30th and the 31st of August. And the motion will be that the synod approves blessings of persons who have had a same-sex marriage, which of course is legal uh, now here in Australia. So it, it's interesting for a number of reasons. First of all, it's interesting because it's, it's a very clever motion, so they want to bless the persons, not the relationship. And, well, and in one uh, sense... They're not performing a marriage ceremony. No, All they're doing so is, if I, you've been married, come here, and we will bless, lay hands on that type of thing. By by blessing the persons and not the relationship, they they hope to be, I think, cleverly avoiding uh, the prohibition. However, it is a bit. Look, I wouldn't use the word disingenuous. Oh, actually, I have. Uh, it, is, it is a way of getting around it. I think more troublingly, it, it is a, it's clearly a breach of the spirit of the agreement, the hard-fought agreement that the bishops um, uh, worked out last year at their bishops' meeting, where they agreed not to act unilaterally on this, and rather to use the, um, the frameworks of the Anglican Church of Australia uh, 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 to pursue these things. Uh, that would mean uh, one of two things. Uh, one, going to the General Synod, which of course would be the preferred way on a big matter like this. You really should go to the General Synod and get the General Synod's uh, agreement, except they won't get it. Because remember, the General Synod last time actually um, censured uh, the Scottish Episcopal Church uh, for right. for doing their same-sex marriage. So they're unlikely to win it in General Synod. Or the other way that they get around these things is they, they, they appeal or they ask a question to what's called the Appellate Tribunal. Uh, which uh, is this body we have, which we're, we're never quite sure. It's not like a Supreme Court. Uh, it's more it in offers opinions. But those that wanted to get uh, women bishops through, they just asked the question to the appellate tribunal. And the appellate tribunal said, oh, okay, looks okay. And then they just went ahead and did it. So that's, that's a way of sidestepping. Uh, uh, the advantage of that, however, is that it is kind of within the framework and the constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia. Well, either way, uh, this has caused a real storm because uh, Bishop John Parks has uh, has pushed ahead uh, unilaterally. He's broken that collegiality. He's broken that 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 
that agreement, uh, and it's caused a real it's caused a real stink. Uh, it is interesting to note, and I think this is probably worth noting, and part of the part of the complexity of it, that he actually is about to retire, and he announced recently that he will retire shortly after the synod. He will take up his unused leave. Yeah. And that will begin shortly after the synod, and then he will return at the end of his leave to to place up his staff. Uh, so what he gets to do is throw a bomb in the middle of the room and then let other people um, sort out the mess. However, I suspect, and this is going to be a bit of exclusive for you here in Anglican TV, I suspect he won't disappear so very quickly because two weeks, I am reliably informed, I've seen the documentation, Two weeks after that synod vote, a very prominent clergyman in the diocese who's been at the forefront of this debate is having a such a blessing of his of his marriage. Uh, they're calling it a morning prayer with blessings appropriate to the occasion. I've seen the invite, and again, the sophistry is amazing, isn't it? Yes. But but that's happening that probably i would imagine is going to be is going to be the uh, the course celebra to 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 put on top of this and look uh, i have no knowledge of this but i would not be surprised if a soon to be retired uh, bishop thought it might be his place to take part uh, in that ceremony so it, it is on a knife edge um and, and as you'd expect uh people are starting to make their views uh, known the most recent is the new cranmer society which is an organization of of, of evangelicals and like-minded people in the Diocese of Melbourne, which is the Primates uh, Diocese, and they have uh, they issued a very, very um, clear uh, press release uh, just uh, just over the weekend, uh, uh, urging uh, Bishop John Parks not to break the unity of the Church uh, on this matter. Well, what's the likelihood? I mean, there's no accountability. He's stepping on. He could even preside over the blessing of individuals if he wanted to, uh, but there's not going to be any accountability. Senior conservatives uh, in, in the Anglican Church of Australia have made it quite clear that if a bishop moves ahead with any of these things, that they will take out disciplinary action um, against them. And whether that succeeds or fails, it will be a clarifying moment, won't it? If it succeeds, then we've got clarity. If it actually, if disciplinary measures fail, but actually we've got clarity as well that the, the Anglican Church of Australia has no desire uh, to get this matter sorted out. Um, so that will that would probably be kicked off anyway, but, but Parks will be gone. So, and, and what ultimately would be the backlash? A, a slap on the wrists? Uh, here, your wrists are slap. Keep your pension. Uh, everything's okay. So, you know, it's um, uh, brave, brave, Bishop Parks. Hmm. I, I blame Netflix, but uh, Dave and I have been having a lot of trouble here with the communication here tonight. Probably because the fiber optic line running all the way over to, to Sydney is, you know, experiencing high volume because of the latest Netflix downloads. Uh, so we're going to cut it a little bit short. But before that, you told me in pre-show that you're thinking about writing a book. Uh, look, uh, more than thinking. Uh, okay, been, you put uh, pen to than, paper. I've been, <laughs> I, yeah, well, I, I put finger to, uh, to, to keyboard. I've been thinking a while uh, about uh, writing a book. Uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, those two know me well. Know that there are many words in here trying to get out. Uh, some of them even might make some sense. Uh, and uh, shortly before I went away on my um, on my recent holiday, I preached uh, five weeks in a row, and I preached something I've been dying to do for a while, which is to look at uh, uh, what we call Christophanies, appearances of, of oh, the, the second person of the Trinity mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. Uh, and uh, so I preached through five of those uh, events in the early Old Testament and looked at the pastoral significance of that, moving from just from the academic intellectual interest in it into saying actually what what pastorally what's here and most of all how does this make me love jesus um all the more and at the end of it all i went this is the book and the great beauty of it is that i have five chapters essentially written already i've got five sermon scripts i'll need some work uh it needs topping and tailing i think it needs one more encounter uh, i think writing up the, the, that i think is important and i hope uh maybe sometime next year to have a manuscript that um uh, uh, i trust will be a blessing a blessing to the church. I, I, I hope it'll make uh, readers uh, love Jesus all the more, and I hope also it will address some of the peripheral issues uh, that surround this topic, such as um, in the Old Testament, who is saved and on what basis, mm. and what do we say about those who who love God? Uh, is God consistent in the way that He reveals Himself? All those all those kinds of things. Uh, I don't want to give too much more because one, that would be spoilers, and two, I actually haven't written no. <laughs> those bits. Uh, but listen, I look forward to my signed copy. 
I would yeah. love to read it when it, when I get a chance. Yeah. Uh, sometime do you, in the new year do you do you sign copies of all the books that you receive? Is that is that what you do? <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. <laughs> I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm David Old. And you've been watching Anglican Unscripted episode 524.